Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Ann, and today is April 1st, 2019. And today is April Fool's Day. And uh, this day really started in, um, I think, the 1500s when the Gregorian calendar came into effect. And people used to celebrate the Julian calendar. And if you forgot to switch over to the new calendar and still tried to celebrate that day in April, that day being New Year's in April, then you were called an April fool. And so people still use this day as a way or a time to play prank on people on April Fool's Day. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that, but I thought it was kind of interesting because we used to play with it when I was growing up. Now, when I woke up this morning, I was just laying in my bed, and to be really truthful, I was really feeling a little down. I was thinking about a number of things that were on my mind. <clears throat> Some of them were like, you know, family-related problems. But I was also feeling a little bit down on some comments that I had gotten on uh, several videos that I had put out. And one particular comment that stayed with, my, with me in my mind that bothered me, and it was someone who said that I could not be who I say that I am because Yahushua's bride or wisdom or the Holy Spirit would never be telling people who she is and that the only way that we would find out who the bride is or who Yahushua was or who wisdom is is that he would have to come and bring that information to us and they said that she is very humble and quiet and that this is just something that she wouldn't be doing what I'm doing so I you know I, it, it kind of made me feel bad and I knew it wasn't true because, see, everything that I have been given has been given to me by Yahushua or the Father to post. But, you know, even so, and I even say that in the video, they still call me all kinds of names and said things like, you know, you're unstable and crazy and that kind of thing. But, you know, as I said, I knew that they were not telling the truth, but it still kind of bothered me. So now, as I lay there this morning, I was kind of, you know, moping and sulking. I heard in my spirit, have you forgotten Sirach chapter 24? And I remembered, I said, oh yeah, that's a very interesting chapter. So I got up, got my uh, information out to try to find it and to read it. And brothers and sisters, it was exactly what I needed to hear. Yes, sir. Wisdom is humble and she's full of grace and love, but she is no wimp. She is by no wimp, by no means. And that made me smile. So that is what I'm going to do today in my video or post. I'm going to allow you to hear Sirach chapter 24. And um, I'm just going to kind of have it read to you. And this chapter is all about wisdom. And again, Sirach is in the Apocrypha, but this chapter is basically all about wisdom. Now, as I go through it, I'm going to be making a few connections for you that I think are very interesting. So I'm going to put some notes in the reading. And one in particular is going to take you to Ezekiel, and I'm going to have Ezekiel read also. So please listen to these notes because I think it's going to point out some things that you probably have not thought about. So the next uh, voices that you will be hearing will be my electronic readers, and they're going to read Sirach um, chapter uh, 24 and also Ezekiel, and I think it's Ezekiel chapter 4 some verses in Ezekiel chapter 45 and 46. So the next voice you'll hear will be that. Sirach chapter 24 from the Apocrypha. Verse 1 to 2, Wisdom shall praise herself, and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth, and triumph before his power. Note, in the following verses, 
this is wisdom speaking. Verse 3-16, I came out of the mouth of the Most High, and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelt in high places, and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone compassed the circuit of heaven, and walked in the bottom of the deep. In the waves of the sea and in all the earth, and in every people and nation, I got a possession. With all these I sought rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the Creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Likewise in the beloved city he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. Note, Yahushua inheritance is in Jerusalem. Read Ezekiel 45 verses 1, and verses 6 to 8, and also Ezekiel 46 verses 16 to 18, and you will see how Yahushua has his inheritance in Israel, just as wisdom is proclaiming her inheritances in Jacob and in Jerusalem. Also Ezekiel 46, 16 to 18 talks about the prince's sons, these sons are given to him by wisdom, who is also the pregnant woman of Revelation 12. We will now take a short bypass and read from the verses in Ezekiel to show wisdom's inheritance which is with Yahushua. And then we will return to Sirach 24 and continue. Readings from Ezekiel chapter 45 and 46 The prince in these verses, Ezekiel 45 colon 1, and verses 6 to 8, is God the Father's son Yahushua. This explains his inheritance in the land of Israel. Ezekiel 45 colon 1 Moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord, an holy portion of the land, the length shall be the length of five, and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. Ezekiel 45 colon 6 8 6 And ye shall appoint the possession of the city five thousand broad, and five and twenty thousand long, over against the oblation of the holy portion, it shall be for the whole house of Israel. Seven and a portion shall be for the prince on the one side and on the other side of the oblation of the holy portion, and of the possession of the city, before the oblation of the holy portion, and before the possession of the city, from the west side westward, and from the east side eastward, and the length shall be over against one of the portions, from the west border unto the east border. 8. In the land shall be his possession in the land of Israel, and my princes shall no more oppress my people, and the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. These verses explains that the prince, God the Father's son has sons of his own, who he will give inheritance to. Ezekiel 46 colon 16-18 16 Thus saith the Lord God, if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons it shall be their possession by inheritance. 17 But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be his to the year of liberty, after it shall return to the prince, but his inheritance shall be his sons for them. 18 Moreover the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression, to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his sons inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. And now we will return to Sirach chapter 24. Back to Sirach chapter 24, verses 12 to 17, And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. I was exalted like a cedar in Libanus, and as a cypress tree upon the mountains of Hermon. I was exalted like a palm tree in Engadi, and as a rose plant in Jericho, as a fair olive tree in a pleasant field, and grew up as a plain tree by the water. I gave a sweet smell like cinnamon and espalathus, and I yielded a pleasant odor like the best myrrh, as galbanum and onyx, and sweet storax, and as the fume of frankincense in the tabernacle. As the turpentine tree I stretched out my branches, and my branches are the branches of honor and grace. 17 As the vine brought I forth pleasant savor, and my flowers are the fruit of honor and riches. Verses 18-22 I am the mother of fair love, and fear, and knowledge, and holy hope, I therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children which are named of him. Come unto me, 
all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourselves with my fruits. For my memorial is sweeter than honey, and mine inheritance than the honeycomb. They that eat me shall yet be hungry, and they that drink me shall yet be thirsty. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. Note, Wisdom is now extolling the Almighty God and Saviour. Verses 23-29, All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God, even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you, cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and beside him there is no other Saviour. Verses 25-27, he filleth all things with his wisdom, as Phison and as Tigris in the time of the new fruits. He maketh the understanding to abound like Euphrates, and as Jordan in the time of the harvest. He maketh the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light, and as Gion in the time of vintage. Note, now it appears that God the Son is now extolling wisdom as his helper in his exploits. She is his garden, like in the Song of Solomon. Verses 28-30 the first man knew her not perfectly, no more shall the last find her out. For her thoughts are more than the sea, and her counsels profounder than the great deep. I also came out as a brook from a river, and as a conduit into a garden. Verses 31-34, I said, I will water my best garden, and will water abundantly my garden bed, and, lo, my brook became a river, and my river became a sea. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning, and will send forth her light afar off. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy, and leave it to all ages for ever. Behold that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. This is the end of Sirach chapter 24. Shalom until next time.